Hello, this is Greg Allison from Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm coming to you on the 3rd of July 2020. And what we're going to talk about again is a plenty. We're going to talk about property rights, private property. So, to get into it, you might say, Greg, what's this corn cob got to do with it? This corn cob pipe. Hey man, think about it. <laughs> is there any better symbol of being a, a redneck or a hillbilly than a corn cob pipe? But hey friends, this is a very fancy corn cob pipe. It's handmade, handcrafted. In fact, I made it when I was about 12 years old. So it's got a little bit of sentimental value. If you watch my live stream videos, you've seen I have larger corn cob pipes. Now this one's not been lit in probably 20 years. But, and all I've ever smoked in my corn cob pipes is either rabbit tobacco, which is a natural herb, and regular pipe tobacco. Never cannabis, I never do that. Uh, because I have to be able to have a security clearance among other things. So, also not only is this handmade, but it's got a black walnut stem. That's a black walnut stem. And I made this with a pocket knife and a wire. Now it took me quite a few hours to build this one and the, the bigger ones took even longer. So Greg, what's this got to do with private property? Well, let me tell you the definition of private property. Private property, as defined in dictionary.com. Go to dictionary.com and look up private property and it will be defined as land or belongings, land or belongings owned by a person or a group and kept for their exclusive use. Now let me repeat that. Private property is <clears throat> land or belongings owned by a person or a group and kept for their exclusive use. And you're going to say, oh Greg, how can you quote directly from dictionary.com and you stand out in the middle of the woods and you don't have your phone on you and you're just holding a pipe and a camcorder? Oh, my friends, that's that data jack in the back of my head. <laughs> See? Oh, that's my hair. <laughs> oh, you know, there's tricks of the trade. It might be memory, maybe, or, or a trick of the trade. Just like there's tricks in the trade on how to build a pipe. People used to ask me, Greg, how do you make those pipes? And I'd always tell them, that's the secret that separates a master pipe builder from the amateur. And I made some really, I had made corn cob pipes that was three foot long. I always used walnut stems. Not because they're easier, just because I like black walnut. <laughs> I always like black walnut. Now, uh, so, I'm going to smoke this pipe in a moment. But before I do all that and talk about private property, I'm going to say, hey, I put a lot of videos on this channel. Proposition of this channel is to help you survive, thrive, and stay out of the hive. Don't put any data jacks on the back of your head, okay? <laughs> Neural lace. Yeah, you might be in the hive. You get too much in the social media, you might be in the hive. <laughs> I did a couple of videos on the hive, in fact. You can check them out. All that said, yeah, if you want to check out all my videos, you never see all my videos by looking at what comes up on the page when you bring it up or looking at the playlist. Click the videos and scroll through them. That's how you see them all. You can't put all the stuff in the playlist. They're just not big enough. And, and hey, I... This pipe's been retired for 20 years. I'm about to fire it up again uh, just for the purpose of this video. Why? Why am I doing that? Well, also, I'll say subscribe to my channel. Bang the update notification bell and click all. To support my channel, uh, click the links below. It is time to prep. Go to True Leaf Market to get your heirloom seeds. It is still a good time to plant your garden. You can still get your heirloom seeds and buy some to save them for next year. I'm going to tell you what. You better have some. Times are getting a little too interesting. And you may not be able to get them again. So you better, you know, when it hits the fan, what you got is all you got. Same way for food. Go to prepwithgreg.com. Prepwithgreg.com to get uh, a special uh, $100 off a four-week long-term food storage supply. That's an extra way to little hedge your bet, give you a little bit more to get through. And if you click on the click around on that page, it'll take you straight into the My Patriot Supply website. I think in the upper left-hand corner. And uh, through there, you can buy all kind of prepping supplies, including one-year food storage, where it's like three dollars a meal or something like that for uh, for a whole year supply. Actually, less than that, I think. So, check it out. That's how you can get prepared. Now, all that said, uh, let's light the pipe. Now, the reason I brought a short pipe, not one of my bigger long pipes, like you might have seen in my live stream video. Like I said, I have made them three foot long. Is it's easier to handle for the purposes of making a video. And I don't smoke wacky tobacco. Right, this is regular old pipe tobacco. I'll put some in here. And this one handed is somewhat less than elegant. 
<laughs> and we're gonna see if this thing still works. Maybe a spider's made a nest in it, right? <laughs> the stem. Mm. The stem is not 100% clear. I probably needed to clean it out. So it's been a long time. And I'm not endorsing smoking the tobacco, okay? I'm just showing you what my little private property made some, uh, you know, back in 1972 or so, can still do. So this is about 48 years old, this pipe. Now immediately I probably got to light a little better make it go. And we're going to dispense with that for the moment. So, now the neat thing about this is this is handcrafted. But by the definition of land or belongings, this is one of my belongings. I'll show you another belonging that I handcrafted uh, in about 1979 or 1980, probably 1980 on a rifle range at Fort Bragg from a slab off of a pine tree. From a nice big slab of pine bark and I whittled this from a pocket knife, yes. I did all that, including boring the holes where I made the eyes from and the teeth off my pocket knife. I didn't make the wormhole that came in it. <laughs> so I did that one. But you know, I used to make these little masks a lot when I was a kid. I thought they were fun to make. So uh, I don't know, for some reason I was always attracted to making little masks like that. And that's the only one I got and I know of that's still surviving to this day. It's hard to find a slab of pine bark that big that's that good holds together and will hold together for so many decades but it has <laughs> these are part of my personal belongings stuff that I made with my own hands they're part of the art that I produced and my own creativity and effort now if let's talk about private property some people are against private property some people says well private property is bad it gives an unfair advantage to those that's already got it of course, you know, part of your ambition, if you work real hard and build a future, you'd like to be able to have some security for your kids. So maybe you would like to pass on private property, or maybe just artifacts and memories. They're all private property. Uh, you might say, oh, Greg, we're only talking about property, land. Well, it doesn't say that. Private property is considered land or belongings. Where do you draw the line? The problem with this whole thing is that line can always shift. There's nothing saying the line's always going to be here, or there, or yonder. You can always say that, but those things always tend to move around and shift. But even when you get to land, there's a lot to be said but for the talk I'm going to give you here about uh, craftsmanship, creativity, uh, stewardship, and productivity. Now, maybe I should light this up again. Let's see if we can get some fire coming out of this thing. It's a good coal bed, and it'll stay burning. For all these decades, it still works. <laughs> Walnut stem. Now you don't help pot back or cigar tobacco. Try not to anyway. Smoke. Anyway. Not a bad smoke. And I'll talk to you later about the health benefits of rabbit tobacco. I know my future herb videos. I got some growing out around my greenhouse up front. Still very green right now. I'll show it to you when it's ready. So what's the advantages of private property? If I knew somebody could take this from me when I made it, would I invested the hours and effort I put into it? Would I have used black walnut? It would have been so artistic, you may say, that's not artistic, Greg. Right? What about that? Or a painting. Or so many other things that you might create just for fun. But maybe, maybe you want to pass it down to a kid. Those are small examples. Think about private property. That's where uh, a land, let's take a talk about land. Uh, such as my place here. 
maybe I'd like to pass that down to my kids. But if this wasn't mine, when I went through all the effort to develop and build that greenhouse, to build my barn, there's a lot of work in that. Well, check out these mushrooms. <laughs> Aren't those beautiful? Aren't they gorgeous? <laughs> now, I'm not a mushroom expert, not yet, so. Okay, my garden needs a little weeding right now. I'm gonna get out and do some work. I still gotta pull some more garlic. But what I, that was an incredible amount of work. I mean, you might be, not be able to tell. All the worm beds, everything out in those woods. You know, I invested in building all that stuff and it's enabled me to teach you how to garden, how to raise worms. And to be able to provide services to help you survive, thrive, and stay out of the hive. To grow your own food. Well, would I have done all that if I didn't own it? No. No. I wouldn't have had a pride or put forth the effort. <laughs> if you knew it wasn't yours, why would you do it? When, you, when things aren't yours, people typically do the minimum to get by. Because it's not theirs. They might do a little bit more, but typically not as much. You're really not going to really work to excel and achieve. Economies where people don't own private property, typically, without some other form of incentive other than a whip, never reach the level of attainment of uh, prosperity and achievement that they do where you have private property. Also, private property is usually better cared for. The stewardship is better. Go look at the commons in so many countries and they're usually trashed. Now, there's people who go around and pick them up sometimes, but you know, private property it tends to be taken care of better. Private property enables you to have creativity. You can create nice, pretty homes, do wonderful things with it, be artistic. It gives variety and culture to our life. Think about if all your homes that were commonly held, you might all be living in cinder block, cookie cutter houses. That would be so boring, it might just bore you out of your mind. If that's all there was for incentive, then that might be all you'd have. Uh, having private property allows for creativity, it allows for incentives, it allows for prosperity. Uh, private economies do far better. Let me give you an example. Everybody talks about resources. Well, a country is wealthy because they got resources. Venezuela is resource rich, but the Venezuelans are starving. Singapore, by comparison, has no resources, no natural resources, but the economy booms. Why? Because of private enterprise and the ability to own private property and do things like that. Makes a huge difference. To, to excel in China, they mimic private property. They come up with incentives. They create companies. That's why I say they're really not truly a communist society. They're more of a um, fascist country, actually. Uh, you'll figure that one for yourself. I've done a video on that. And that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to say there's advantages in stewardship, taking care of things when it's yours. You take pride in it. You care for it because it is yours. Because you might want to pass it down. You will take better care of it. You don't want to give your kid some piece of junk. Or you maybe need to sell it and move on to something else later in life. So it's up to you to have more stewardship for things that are yours. Now some people may be better at stewardship than I am. I'm an extremely busy guy. i got too many hats on my head. <laughs> Figurative and literally. You know, I do have a day job. I'm a contractor. I work at NASA. I do not speak for NASA or the company I work for. I only speak for Greg Allison. I'm just telling you what I do. I'm an electrical engineer. I do numbers. I do engineering. And I've done weapon systems. And I have been running the halls of Congress. I have been uh, to other countries. I'm a student of history. Uh, military strategy. I've been studying that stuff since I was a kid. So when I come here and talk to y'all about this stuff, it's just not you know somebody just thinking up something the first time in their life. I made a life study of, of tracking these things and trying to be aware. And, and in part because I do want to know what's coming at us. I do want to know what's happening in society. What is it we need to prepare for? These are all important things to know. Again, that's why you need to subscribe to my channel because I bring you that insight and wisdom that I've acquired over my many decades. If you see the uh, video with Dr. Peter Vincent Pry, he, uh, he said, you know, he said I'm one of the thinkers, one of the uh, deep thinkers. And I try to be. I try to share that with y'all because I think it's value added, something I can bring to you that may be more than some of the other channels bring. Although there are some good ones out there, there really are. In any event, 
private property is of value mainly because people take care of it better. Uh, and another reason. The main thing is humans are territorial. And anytime you have a system that goes against human nature, it's doomed to have all kinds of problems and usually is fraught with them and doomed to failure most often. Show me the people fighting to get into to North Korea, to get into Venezuela, to get into China. Uh, why is it that Hong Kong so much don't want to go in? Why is it Taiwan so much don't want to go in? Even with the gains that was made by uh, mainland China. In spite of their gains, they're not what they could be. There's a whole lot that you don't know and see. A lot of things that the people there know that you don't know, and that's why they don't know part of it. Look at uh, Eastern Europe. You know, they're so happy to be out from under the rule of communism. You won't see them going back. Any place that's been there don't want any part of it. They don't want to go back to it. That's what you need to know and understand. And that's, you know, private property may seem like it gives an unfair advantage. But here's the beauty. In a free enterprise system, you're free to come up with your own you got to work for it, but you're free to come up with your own ideas. You're free to try your own things, to be an entrepreneur. Or to work hard and get a good education, work hard. It might be a trade these days, not a college education, unless you become an engineer or a software developer person. Um, the value of college education is highly overrated. I just mentioned that in a recent video. Very highly overrated. And the debts that you acquire for, from it are way too much. So consider, reconsider that. But... Uh, and reconsider sending your kids to college. Now, it might be the best thing for your kid, depending on your kid and what they're going into, but you need to make sure it's something that has real prospect and real promise and not just something the school systems tell you they're going to place your kid. Don't, can't, don't bank on that. They're going to place you in debt what they're going to do. They don't care. They really don't. If they did, their performance record would be a lot better. Shame on those places. And indoctrinate our kids with crap and give them no real education and they're not prepared for the world to either work or survive in it or even operate in it. Schools are a total, utter failure. So, that said, it might be best to join with somebody working out there and become a journeyman, a tradesman, an apprentice. Anyway, um, but private property is something you can take pride in. You can develop, you can craft it. It adds to the culture of society, and you will take better care of it but it gives you the springboard to advance yourself. It gives you uh, the means of self-propriety. But maybe the best thing of all the private property is, it enables you to be sovereign. What they would like to do in our society is take away our individual sovereignty. That's why they want to shut down all the small businesses. That's why they want it all to go to the big Uber corporations. So that's why I tell you to vote with your daughter. Vote local. Vote for the local artist and local tradesperson, your local farmer. Buck against that trend. Because look in the recent lockdowns, who made all the money? The billionaires. The uber rich billionaires made half a trillion dollars in the last in the first phase of the lockdowns, maybe more next time around. And the small guys got put out of business. And the big guys laughed all the way to the bank. They probably laughed a whole lot at the riots as they burnt the small businesses that many more market share for the big guys and it's alleged that they're behind the funding for a lot of that stuff but well, you don't believe that or not i'm here to tell you that private property has its advantages but sovereignty self-sovereignty being self-sovereign is the most important thing you can be that's who everyone should be everyone should be self-sovereign able to stand on your own two feet not to have to be dependent on anyone for anything to make it on your own that is the real value. That is the real value, self-sovereignty. That is the, the true aim. And that's what private property enables. Now, you can come to this country. I've seen people come to this country who didn't speak English. I've known people that did this. Who came here, they either got a good trade or they, got, or they were just frugal or they uh, just worked real hard, and sometimes they were entrepreneurs, they made it. I know a lot of these people, they made it, they made it big, they came here without a penny in their pocket and couldn't even speak the language and they got rich. Or else just very prosperous, done very well. I know a lot of people have done that. 
So if somebody can do that, we can do it here too. If we don't do it, it may just be because we have a poverty of consciousness. We've convinced ourselves we can't do these things or we shouldn't do these things. You can, if that's what you want. But you won't get these things by sitting on a couch and watching TV day and night or playing computer games all the time. Not unless you're professional at it. <laughs> I've actually made some money watching TV. I was a Nielsen guy there for a while. I actually did make a little money. But I didn't watch much. It was kind of funny. And the only thing I watched was some documentaries. And back then I didn't even watch some PBS. But, you know, I went for educational stuff, not uh, sitcoms. I've never been a fan of sitcoms and things like that. Or sports. I'm always trying to learn things. That's my objective. That's a good objective to have. Be continuously on a path of learning. So, there is value to private property. Hey, I want to keep this. At least for now. Because I might decide to have a smoke with you again one day. <laughs> I'd like to keep this. For now. Maybe one of my kids will want it. So. Because I've had it for a long time. My son was already born when I made it. But my. Neither of my daughters were. It's been around for quite a while. So. There's so much you can do, so much you can accomplish, and you'll do more and accomplish more and go further when you have private property available to you. I worked for this. I put myself through college. I didn't get no advantage myself. I put myself through college. I had to join the Army to make it. I, in fact, I was married on top of that and had kids with kids, and I, part of the time I was a single parent. I was a Mr. Mom. I was a Mr. Mom, put myself through college. And my daddy and my mom didn't pay my way through. I did it. And so can you. Or get a trade, which would be better today. So, there's still a lot of opportunities today. You just got to be able to see them. And work your way into them. So, with that said, uh, I've drawn on enough about this. We're coming up on the 4th of July. I just thought it would be important to have a topic that dealt with a part of what's intrinsic nature of this country, the Western society, and that's private property. A lot of people in the West now, a lot of the young people think private property is anachronistic. They think it goes against social justice or that it's unfair. I'm going to tell you that anybody who listens to this could, if they're enterprising enough, attain private property of many different types and as much as they want. You can buy stocks. That's private property too. Anyway, that's all i got to say. Except for, if you're in the United States, have a happy 4th of July. Thank you for watching.